All right, fair warning, things are going to get a little bit heated here, so I apologize in advance for maybe getting a little red in the face. Excuse my potty mouth and pardon my French, but Netflix is a bunch of dummies. Netflix, for some reason, greenlights every single project that accidentally floats across their desk, assuming it came from someone with a pulse. I hate to be so crude and crass with my language here, but Netflix is a bunch of goofball stupid idiots. It blows my mind that they have so many Netflix originals and so few of them are even decent. I want to be clear, I'm only focusing on Netflix originals and not its overall catalog. Even though I do think the strength of Netflix's overall catalog has been diminishing in a big way over the last few years, it's becoming pretty weak in comparison to the competitors. I'm only talking about Netflix originals for this video. They release so many, and I guarantee you haven't heard of even 2% of them. According to this data, they released nearly 900 originals in 2022. Where did they go? They certainly weren't marketed or advertised efficiently. They just fucking flush them down the Netflix shitter or something. Where are they? I, I can probably count on one hand how many Netflix originals of 2022 I actually watched and liked, or even really heard of in a big way. The others are just left to fester and die, just a rotted, bloating corpse on the Netflix catalog that nobody will ever click on because they are not interesting. I just don't understand why they greenlight so many productions and why they take so many series and put them on here as a Netflix original when most of them are just actually horrible. It's movies and shows that nobody will ever click on. Netflix original presents The Poop That Took a Pee. Netflix summer blockbuster number one trending. Taking my dog Bill to get neutered. A three-part docuseries. Netflix original. Huge, yeah. Like, no one wants any of these things. It, it, like, I just don't get it. And I guess the reason I'm a little heated is because Netflix is an expensive fucking subscription. Like, Netflix costs a lot and there's, like, nothing on there that I really watch actively. I really just kind of watch the big Netflix originals, like, the good ones, the rare time that they have a hit. But for every one hit, they have a thousand shit. It's just so weird how they, with a smile on their face, will throw so many things at the wall and just hope maybe one or two of them stick. I just can't imagine that's a super effective business strategy, I, but then again, what do I know? I thought them removing password sharing would pretty much put them in the grave. I couldn't have been more wrong. They now have more Netflix subscribers than ever because people were too gluttonous. They needed their fix of Netflix content, so they all immediately signed up after getting kicked off from password sharing crackdown. So clearly I'm not an expert on what's going to make Netflix a ton of money, but I can tell you what will never make them money. A Jake Paul documentary. I think the Jake Paul documentary they have slated to come out pretty soon is the perfect example of how out of touch Netflix is and how willing they are to just say yes to any project ever. Like, it, it, no one wants to watch a fucking Jake Paul documentary. This guy has vlogged every second of his life living in his brother's shadow since the time that he was an actual teenager. There is nothing about his life that people either don't know or care about if they don't know. Like, no one gives a fuck, and yet... He's got a Netflix documentary coming out. Why? What is the point? Now to be clear, I know the documentary isn't just about Jake Paul, he is a component of it. But what a wasted component. This is a waste of a Netflix original. Him just whining about being the villain of boxing, or the bad guy of the internet, or the Disney Channel star turned douchebag. Like, who cares? Who fucking cares? The new Jake Paul documentary on Netflix. Another perfect example of how out of touch Netflix is. Yeah, apparently you're doing a Jake Paul documentary called Untold Jake Paul, The Problem Child. That's so ridiculously dumb. I cannot imagine even his own fans will watch this. I just can't. I really can't. Because it's fucking boring. Who the fuck is going to turn on Netflix and be like, I want to learn about Jake Paul, the guy who vlogged every single second of his entire goddamn life. I need to know more about Jake Paul. Like, have him do, like, if you're going to make a Jake Paul show, have him do something. Fucking send him to an underground fight club arena. The guy is a psychopath. Like, have him do crazy shit. Instead of just tell his life story that everybody already knows. And then call the fucking wambulance about people not liking him. It's just such, it's so simple. They don't get it. Netflix is so out of touch, it's crazy. Like, who the fuck cares? Have them do something interesting for the show. So would you make a show out of? 
If I was tasked to make a Jake Paul show, I'd have this fucking goofball doing stupid odd jobs. I think that'd be interesting. Have him, like, train for Cirque du Soleil and put him in an actual performance and see if he tanks the entire fucking thing. Like, give him something to do. To make actual entertainment, as opposed to just have him sit down in front of a camera, like, half fucking lobotomized, to tell a dumb story nobody cares about, everybody already knows, where he orders some goddamn French cries whining about why people don't like him and he's the problem child. That's lame. That's fucking lame. Have him work in a high-pressure place that has to be... That has to be nice, like a waiter. Okay, a bit of a silly idea, but like your heart's in the right place. Just have him do anything. Just give him shit to do to make an entertaining show. Fucking give him his own Eric Andre show and watch it be an absolute disaster. Even that would still be somewhat entertaining to see how bad it could get. Like, like actually just give him shit to do. It's the exact same thing I said about the quarterback show, where they just sit quarterbacks down to interview them, I guess. That's boring. No one's going to turn on Netflix to learn about fucking Jake Paul's life that they already know. Dirt cheap to produce. Yeah, but you're going to get nothing out of it. And it's not going to be that cheap. You think Jake Paul did this for cheap? One of the greediest men on the planet? You think he did this Netflix deal for cheap? Hell no. Why do people care so much? Nobody cares. This is going to be a massive fucking flop. Nobody cares. That's the point. <laughs> that, that's the point I'm making. Netflix is so lost. It just produces trash. And then occasionally gets lucky with like one good thing that comes out. Do you think they'll make something with other creators? They already have multiple times and they all flop. Miranda Sings has a show on here. I don't know what, when Netflix is going to learn its lesson. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it takes to get the message through. Paying oodles of clams every month for a Netflix subscription, and this is the kind of shit they deliver to the table? This is what they cooked up in the kitchen? Bring the chef out here. I want to have a few words here. Where, where's the Netflix chef? Because this is, this is revolting. I'm sending it back to the kitchen. Just fucking why? I just don't understand. And Jake Paul is not the only YouTuber they have done this with or done similar things with. I just don't get it. Th again, I don't think this is something even his fans care to see. I just don't even know who the audience is even supposed to be for this. Like, what, what's the target demographic? Brain rot zombies that just doom scroll Netflix forever watching everything that pops up? Because I feel like that's the only people who will actually even bother having this on for a split second. Jake Paul is not an interesting person to make a series out of about his untold story. And his brother became a superstar, and he rode his coattails, and then he himself became a superstar. End of story. Like, sure, there's probably some nuance throughout there, and I'm sure he's gone through some difficult times in his life. Everybody has. But that doesn't mean that it makes for an interesting show that people are going to want to sit down and fucking watch. Like I said, if you wanted to make something with Jake Paul, that's totally fine. But just have him do something that'll make it entertaining, other than just telling his story. Have him fucking ramp the Batmobile off of a turbo Omega ramp over 12 flaming school buses, and then when he lands on the other side, have him do a no-holds-barred two-minute keg stand till he pisses himself. Like, I don't know. Just have him do anything. There's just no reason he should even be a part of, like, the untold story of Jake Paul. Jake Paul, untold. Again, I know it's not all about him, but, like, why even have him in it? It doesn't make any sense. It's just... It, it really feels like some kind of desperation from either Netflix or whoever was producing the Untold series itself to try and get some kind of cheesy, cheap clicks on the production. Like, Jake Paul's name would be enough of an attention grabber to have people come in. But I just don't think that's the case for this. Because no one gives a fuck about the Jake Paul story about... You know, his transition into being a boxer and being labeled a bad boxer and being labeled a villain and all of that. It's just not interesting. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about this because Netflix just has so much garbage on it. And I really think this is a great example for just, they greenlight anything, actually anything. Which I don't think they should do. I would rather them just not have 891 originals come out in a year and instead maybe have less than half of that, but all of the originals are good. I think that'd be so much better. But anyway, that's, that's about it. See ya.